Hello everybody, this is Talon with the next Nutrition Tier List, a series where I break down all the options in a given food group and rank them based on how nutritious they are and how they impact your health. Today we're going over dairy. Now I'm not sure how milk got a whole food group to itself, but here we are. Actually, never mind, I kind of do, because in terms of nutrition, dairy is entirely unique with the combination of essential nutrients it provides. Now when I say dairy, assume that means any product that comes primarily from cow's milk. So you get the benefits of animal-based food without having to kill the cow. Pretty sweet deal. And since everything dairy is initially derived from the same source, you can expect a lot of them to come packing a lot of the same nutrients. Animal fats, vitamin A, vitamin B2, vitamin B12, calcium, phosphorus, selenium, zinc, and a complete source of protein, meaning it contains all nine essential amino acids. Pretty much everything on this list is a solid source of these, and I'm only going to be going over them when there's something special relating to them. A lot of the products on this list have very different uses and places and recipes, so I'm not only going to be comparing them against each other, but also judging them based on how they fit in a more practical sense. Another point is that you'll find a distinct lack of milk variations and cheese variations on this list. In both cases, there's just so many options that if I included them on this list, they would just overwhelm everything else. So you can look forward to a milks tier list, also comparing plant-based milks as well, and a cheese tier list going over all the intricacies of the way too many cheeses there are not too long after this video. Anyway, looking at the tiers, we're going to be comparing the nutritional contents and benefits of each product against any shortcomings or health concerns that they may possess. Keep in mind that these lists are ranked independent of each other, so an A-tier dairy product may not equate to an A-tier meat or an A-tier fruit. All numerical nutritional information on this list and across this series will be based on 100 grams of the individual food, for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. A lot of the products on this list you would consume in very different amounts, so I will take that into consideration. One last thing, everything on here is milk-based, so it goes without saying that if you're lactose intolerant or allergic to milk protein, this might not be the most helpful video for you. But some dairy products do try to make themselves more accessible to those individuals, and I will bring up which ones. Just don't expect me to constantly repeat myself regarding this. And now it's time to explore the world of milk without honey and get to the list. First on this list, we've got the familiar butter. Butter is a higher caloried product mainly being made up of fat, the most calorically dense macronutrient. It also has a mild but noteworthy micronutrient profile. Now the main notable nutrient fact about butter is that it's very high in saturated fat, with about a 2 to 1 saturated to unsaturated fat ratio. While these were once believed to be as bad as it gets for heart health, the more time goes on, the more studies show that this just isn't the case. They do still raise LDL cholesterol, but these saturated fats are shown to mainly result in an increase in LDL particles that are far less detrimental, and have a much more neutral effect than initially believed. There is one saturated fatty acid worth mentioning though, that being butyric acid. A shorter chain saturated fatty acid shown to reduce intestinal inflammation, aid in treating IBS, and improve insulin sensitivity. Grass-fed butter is notable for being more nutritious, notably containing more conjugated linoleic acid, omega-3 fatty acids, micronutrients, and antioxidants. In fact, this is pretty much the case with all dairy products, that grass-fed is going to be better. As far as fats go, butter is a good source of vitamin A, and is typically more manageable for those with lactose intolerance due to butter largely lacking milk sugars. To many people, butter still has a long way to go to completely clear its name, but the reality of it is it's an overall healthy and solid example of a fat and a dairy product. And on this list, it's going to go in the A tier. Low-fat buttermilk is a lower calorie product with an impressive micronutrient content per calorie. Buttermilk is the liquid leftover after milk has been churned into butter, so it's literally the opposite of butter. All buttermilk is fermented and usually cultured, adding healthy bacteria. The bacteria acts as a probiotic, benefiting gut health by aiding in digestion. And fermented dairy products are shown to combat periodontitis, oral inflammation caused by bad bacteria. It's also a good low-calorie source of bone-protecting micronutrients, notably calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin D. That being said, it is a bit higher in sugar and sodium per calorie for people who need to watch out for their intake of those. But overall, buttermilk is a nice, nutritious dairy boost that I'm going to put in the A tier. Cheddar cheese is a higher calorie dairy option with an impressive micronutrient profile. To put things into perspective, these numbers are based on 100 grams of cheese, while a slice of cheese is about 20 grams. Cheeses in general are typically a lot higher calorie due to the absence of water. Thus, they are very protein and fat dense per gram. 
Cheddar cheese in particular is a solid source of many micros. Calcium, phosphorus, selenium, vitamin B12, vitamin A, vitamin B2, and zinc. And it's a solid source of the much rarer vitamin K2. Cheddar cheese is also richer in conjugated linoleic acid, which is shown to aid in fat loss specifically from grass-fed sources. And it being a fermented dairy product is shown to have an anti-inflammatory effect, benefiting heart health. Now, cheddar cheese is very sodium-dense by volume and overall very calorically dense, with most of it coming from fat, so too much cheese may contribute to weight or heart issues. But when used in the right amounts, cheddar cheese can be a nutrient-dense addition to many meals, and for that, I'm going to put it in the B tier. Part skim mozzarella cheese is a moderately higher caloried food with a great micronutrient profile. Now, most mozzarella cheese is part skim, which results in it being lower calorie than most cheeses. It's lower in fat, but still a solid source of protein. It still contains a great amount of the usual dairy micros. Calcium, phosphorus, vitamin A, vitamin B12, selenium, zinc, and vitamin B2, especially per calorie. It is fermented, so it's shown to contribute an anti-inflammatory effect, and its probiotic nature is shown to improve gut health and promote immune health. Now, mozzarella cheese is still pretty calorically dense, and still pretty high in sodium, so you definitely can have too much. But, like most cheeses, it definitely has its place, and I'm going to put it in the B tier. Now, you may notice that there's a pretty distinct difference nutritionally between even these two popular cheeses, but I'm still ranking them very closely. Thus, my desire to dive a bit more into the intricacies of different cheeses in a separate list. Low-fat cottage cheese is a lower-calorie dairy product with a solid micronutrient profile. Cottage cheese is a fresh cheese and is often much lower calorie than your typical cheese, so it's usually treated as its own separate thing. Cottage cheese is inherently acidic, being made from curds. Per calorie, it's a solid source of the all-essential vitamin B12, but the real selling point here is the protein. Cottage cheese is one of the highest protein-to-calorie foods there is, surpassing even many meats like beef, pork, and dark meat chicken. This makes it very filling, with diets including it regularly having shown to be great for weight loss. And it's still a solid source per calorie of many of dairy's bone health micronutrients. On top of all of this, cottage cheese is typically pretty inexpensive. This is pretty much where dairy products peak, with an alteration of milk so protein-rich that it puts many other foods to shame. And so cottage cheese is going in the top tier. Cream is a varying caloried food with a decent micronutrient content. These are the numbers for your typical heavy whipping cream. Different creams are defined by their fat content, with heavy whipping cream being at least 36% milk fat, light whipping cream falling between 30 to 35% milk fat, and light cream ranging between 18 to 30% milk fat. It's a solid source of vitamin A, which is used mainly in eye health and preservation, but cream isn't really intended to be consumed in larger quantities. It's more of a supplement in foods and drinks. So I'm not going to penalize it too much for being higher caloried, because the benefits of the fats are typically so much better than the alternatives, which are usually just spoonfuls of sugar. Cream definitely can have its place in a healthy diet, and thus, I'm going to put it in the B tier. Cream cheese is a higher calorie dairy product with a decent micronutrient profile. Kind of like cottage cheese, this is another one that's generally not associated with most cheeses. In the US, cream cheese falls between 33 to 55% fat, but it's often higher in other countries. Cream cheese is always pasteurized and is usually slightly acidic and has a probiotic effect shown to benefit gut health. Cream cheese is a solid source of vitamin A, but is notably lower in protein than pretty much everything else that goes by the word cheese. It's a tasty treat that absolutely belongs in some recipes, just don't expect to get quite as much out of it as you do other foods. I'm going to put cream cheese in the C tier. Custard is a moderately caloric food that has a solid micronutrient profile. Custard can vary a bit, as it's loosely defined by a combination of egg, some sort of dairy, usually sweetened milk or cream, and some sort of thickener, like cornstarch or gelatin. Custard can be a good source of phosphorus and B vitamins, but is often higher in carbohydrates and lower in protein than both milk and eggs. And most custards as I think of them are typically intended for dessert, often having preservatives for longer shelf life and more added sugar. I don't think the people who made custard really had health on the front of their minds, and realistically, when you're eating it, I don't think it's on the front of yours. But there is some merit there, and I'm going to put it in the C tier. Eggnog is a relatively lower calorie dairy product with a mild micronutrient profile. It's usually made by combining heavy whipping cream, milk, sugar, eggs, and occasionally spirits such as bourbon, brandy, or whiskey for a little extra holiday cheer. Eggnog is notably higher in choline, which is needed for the synthesis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. But again, I just don't think this is one of those products that was made with health on the brain, as evidenced by the alcohol and added sugars. That being said, it's still a lower calorie drink with some benefits, so I'm going to put it in the C tier. 
Frozen yogurt is a moderately caloric dairy product with a mediocre micronutrient profile. In contrast to ice cream, frozen yogurt is made with milk instead of cream, and the nutrition of frozen yogurt can vary pretty wildly. Like regular yogurt, it often contains gut-beneficial probiotics, and the micronutrition benefits coming from nutrients like phosphorus, calcium, and the B vitamins are still there, they're just not in as grand of quantities. But it's no surprise that frozen yogurt is often intended to be a dessert, thus most brands contain added sugars, flavorings, and preservatives to create a more appealing taste and texture. Then again, some brands are so much better about this than others. Unlike a lot of treats, frozen yogurt is a food that you can eat and not feel too bad about it. I'm gonna put it in the D tier. Ghee is an incredibly high-calorie dairy product being made almost entirely of fats. Ghee is simply clarified butter, thus it resembles butter in a lot of ways. Its fatty acid makeup is incredibly similar, mainly being made of generally heart-neutral saturated fats like palmitic acid and stearic acid. But the main fatty acid worth mentioning is still butyric acid, which is shown to reduce intestinal inflammation, treat IBS, and improve insulin sensitivity. Compared to butter, though, ghee is generally just healthy and more nutritious, notably being higher in vitamin A, an eye-protecting antioxidant, and conjugated linoleic acid, a natural trans fat shown to aid with weight loss and as an anti-cancer. It also notably has a higher smoking point. Overall, in reasonable amounts, it's really hard to go wrong with ghee, and I'm going to put it in the top tier. Half and Half is a mildly caloric dairy product with a decent micronutrient content. Half and Half is equal parts cream and milk, as the name would suggest. The FDA requires half and half to contain under 18% fat, so it typically ranges between 11% and 17%. And it's a pretty average dairy product, with less of the micronutrients and compounds in exchange for a less calorically dense sweetener. Overall, I think it belongs in the B tier. Ice cream is a somewhat higher calorie dairy product with a mild micronutrient profile. As the name would suggest, it's made with cream instead of milk, thus on average being a bit fattier. Again, even when dairy is at its worst, you still get a noteworthy amount of milk's signature nutrients, just typically with a lot more calories from fat and especially added sugar. Some brands are better about sugar content than others, but most also contain artificial flavors and additives, some of which have stronger associations with cancers and intestinal issues. If this is your treat of choice, I kind of get it, but I don't think anyone's actually expecting me to advocate for ice cream. And unsurprisingly, I'm going to put it in the F tier. Low-fat kefir is a very low-calorie drink with an impressive micronutrient profile per calorie, and it does seem like most kefir drinks are intended to be low-fat. Kefir is a solid source of protein per calorie and a solid source per calorie of vitamin A, phosphorus, calcium, and vitamin B12. It's a very powerful probiotic, aiding digestion and supposedly mental health, and it is shown to have antibacterial properties for harmful bacteria as well. Now, kefir can be a bit sugary, with some brands including added sugars, and it is possible to consume too much in the probiotic department, which may lead to digestive issues, gas, and nausea. Overall, this isn't something that you should drink like water, but kefir is a rewarding choice, and I'm going to put it in the A tier. Milk is a lower calorie dairy product per gram with a good micronutrient profile. To give reference, a cup of milk, 8 fluid ounces, is roughly 230 grams. Milk is a lower calorie source of protein, with one of its types, whey, being the crux of most protein supplementation. Its fat content varies by type, with whole milk containing about 3.25% fat, reduced fat milk containing about 2% fat, and low fat milk containing about 1% fat. However, the proportions of fatty acid types remain pretty consistent at about 70% saturated, 25% monounsaturated, and 5% polyunsaturated. Milk also contains natural ruminant trans fats, notably conjugated linoleic acid, a natural fat loss aid. And per calorie, milk remains a solid source of vitamin B12, vitamin B2, phosphorus, calcium, and milk is often fortified with vitamin D. Now, lactose intolerance and milk allergists beware. Some dairy products will make an active effort to get rid of lactose or allergy-inducing milk proteins, but plain milk hardly ever will. Overall, it's kind of hard to argue with the benefits of the source and especially the ease of consumption of it. Plain milk is going to go in the A tier. Sour cream is a somewhat higher calorie dairy product with a mild micronutrient profile. Sour cream is roughly 18% milk fat, and the majority of its calories come from that. Sour cream often contains probiotics, but a limited amount due to the pasteurization for safety purposes. It's also very low in protein compared to most dairy products. This is definitely one of the lesser dairy products that is still perfectly fine to include in the dishes that it complements. Just don't expect to get as much of the dairy benefits as you do with other products. Overall, I feel like it belongs in the C tier. And last on this list, we've got yogurt. 
Non-fat Greek yogurt is a lower-calorie dairy product with an impressive micronutrient content. Greek yogurt is most commonly very low in fat, but excels at protein per calorie. But yogurts that do have fat are believed to contain even more ruminant trans fats than milk. Greek yogurt is a great source, especially per calorie, of vitamin B12, vitamin B2, phosphorus, and selenium. It's rich in probiotics shown to boost immune health and digestive health, and is shown to lower blood pressure. Now, this is all the case for true, plain Greek yogurt. This is not the case for most yogurts. Yogurt as a whole is one of the biggest trap foods on Earth. With blended yogurts, fruit at the bottom yogurts, and even some brands that label as just Greek yogurt having a ton of added sugar. Like ice cream amounts of added sugar. And if we're talking about those kind of yogurts, I hate yogurt. Even with strawberries. But plain Greek yogurt, where you put your own strawberries in, that's more like it. You should always check the nutrition label when it comes to yogurt, but honestly, this is just a good rule for all dairy products. Either way, Greek yogurt is going to be rounding out this list in the top tier. And so there you have it. Dairy. Probably the food group with the most similar products in terms of nutrition. I'm honestly still wondering how dairy got to be its own food group, but accepting the fact that it is, I see it as more of a supplementative one, giving you a boost in calories, easily accessible protein, and some often tough-to-get micronutrients. As a whole, dairy is a treat that you shouldn't feel bad about consuming. Now, if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more of these on the way. Be on the lookout for the milk tier list and the cheese tier list coming relatively soon. And remember that all I ask is that you advocate for your body. You only get the one.